my YouTube friends. Today I want to show you how to create this waveform animation and the one down there that's being run from some different music that you can't actually hear. And it's all done with free tools as well. So you know what? Let's get right to it. <laughs> Likes and comments are super easy things that you can do to help push this video to a wider audience. So take a second down below and let me know how I'm doing and while you're there, if you're not subscribed, please do. It really does help me continue to make content that helps you. So thanks. First, we need to install a free plugin to make this work. There's a link in the description so you can download it and follow along. Here we are on the web page. We're gonna go up to the top right and click go to download. And then we just need to scroll down on this page and there are a few different installs. There is a Linux install, a Mac OS install, and two different versions of the Windows install. We are going to select the setup exe and click on that to download it. Then all we need to do is browse to where that file is saved and double click it. It'll bring up this Windows protecting your PC thing. Since this is not a signed application, we're going to click more info. Then we're going to click run anyways. And after a few moments, we're going to get a screen and we want to accept the agreement and click next. Then we want to verify that the proper OBS install location is selected right here. If not, we want to browse to it. Yours is probably C program files OBS dash studio, whereas mine is in E backslash OBS dash studio. But, but just make sure that this is your OBS location. If it is, you just click next and then install. After a few moments, it's done and you can just click finish. And now the waveform plugin is installed. Now all we have to do is set it up in OBS. Now we're gonna easily add this waveform to my initial start screen for my live stream. You guys might be familiar with it. And all we have to do is click the plus and we'll add the waveform visualizer. And we don't really need to rename this unless we want to. So let's just call this intro screen. There we go. And we'll go ahead and add an audio source. In this case, the active audio source is my music. So we'll select my music and there we go. And now we have so many options. It's kind of ridiculous. We're gonna stretch this all the way across the screen. And then I'm just gonna give it 200 here as the height and i don't really like curve you might like curve it's up to you um we've got bars stepped bars which is kind of cool level meter and a stepped level meter which is you know fine we want the uh i think i think i'm gonna go with the stepped bars for this and you can adjust the bar size so if we went with 100 it makes wider or fatter bars and if we went with 10 it makes shorter tinier bars we're gonna stick with the 24 that we already have bar gap is space in between step width all that sort of stuff kind of self-explanatory we can go with the logarithmic frequency scale or uncheck that if we like you can see you kind of get less information when you uncheck it and we want to have as much information as we can so we're gonna keep it up on that you can do mono or stereo and stereo adds the bar to the other side as well we're gonna go with mono in this case and then this auto FFT size we can change this up right here give you a little bit of an idea of what it does it stretches the bar a little more when you do that so, or you can just go with auto and it will decide. I like to keep it in the center. It's pretty much okay that way. Um, this will adjust the way that this window draws in. I didn't really notice a whole heck of a lot of different features to this, but uh, you can play around with it or go with none. You know, if you select gravity, this is how long it takes for the peaks to fall. And if you go with fast peaks, it'll give you a little bit more jitteriness to it. And you can also change your interpolation and the filter and all that kind of stuff. Adjust your cutoff for the sound. So if there's a specific type of or area of the sound that you want it to bump off of specifically, you can change that up right there. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up here and we're gonna change this to bars instead we're gonna add rounded caps. I like that, because that extends the dots all the way across, and I think that looks cool. So what we're gonna do now is come down here, and right now the render mode is solid. You can see it's all totally white. I'm gonna change this to gradient, and we're gonna add a base color. We're gonna use the same kind of blue that I always use. You can see it's in the objects that are in the scene. 
And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this red color here. And that's gonna kinda give us some peaks at the tips. And I like how that is set, cause it's kinda, it only works when the tips are pretty high. And you can adjust that right here. So it gives it more red or more blue. And so if we go all the way over here, we just get a little peak of that at the tips. If we go over here, we're just gonna get blue. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna set it so that the super high peaks get some red and most of the other stuff doesn't. And I think that's about all we need to change to have it working the way we want. And that looks really good. So I think I'm gonna make this a little smaller. So I'm gonna hold the shift key and adjust this down. So it kind of truncates it down a little bit. And I don't know if I like that. We can also do the same thing. We can hold the shift key and adjust it up. Um, but right in there seems good. And now I'm gonna hold the shift key and we're just gonna go like this. We're gonna move this over to the right. And then what I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna copy it. And then I'm going to right click again and we're going to paste a duplicate. And I'm just going to grab our duplicate and move it over here real quick. And then I'm gonna right click on our duplicate, go to transform and we're going to flip it horizontally. And you can kind of see what we're going for here. I'm gonna hold my shift key and drag this more towards the center and we'll hold the shift key and drag this more towards the center until we get these to meet and look like that's how they're supposed to be. And there we go. So now we have this looking pretty good. And I think I'm gonna hold the shift key and I'm gonna shrink this down a little bit. We're gonna do the same with this. We're gonna hold the shift key, shrink it down just a little bit and there we go. We still have a little bit of space in the center here. So again, hold the shift key, move it. And there we go. That looks perfect. So now we've added a waveform that bounces along with our music at the intro. And we can move this or have it at the top or the bottom. We can put it on the left or the right by rotating it. We could have one at the top and bottom, however we want, but it's really cool. So let's add this to a regular scene. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a visualizer as part of our main tutorial scene. Now normally when you see this scene on my live stream, I would have some sort of tutorial going on back here, usually OBS or Poly pop or melon or something like that where I show you how something works but in this case we want to add an effect to our camera right here so in order to do that we're gonna to have to go to the nested scene that this camera is created on and so we're gonna go over here into our nested scenes and we're gonna find our flare camera and there it is right there and we can see that we have a main mic now we're gonna add some of the waveform visualizer to our flare cam so I'm gonna click the plus and we're gonna to go to waveform visualizer we're going to just just call this one cam and click OK. Cam wave, let's do that. All right, and we'll click OK, and there we go. So our audio source, as we can see right here, is the main mic. So we're gonna go here, we're gonna drop it down, and select main mic. There we go. So now we're getting audio visualizer coming right from there. Um, what type of visualizer do we want? This could be interesting. The first thing we're gonna do is come down here and we're gonna make it a radio. We want this to go around in a circle. It can be either type, this one pushes towards the inside or we can push it towards the outside. I tend to like that better. So we're gonna go ahead and push it towards the outside. Then I'm gonna go ahead and instead of curve, we're gonna try some of these other ones. Bars, stepped bars, level meter, which, you know, in step level meter, those are really not something we're gonna use. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and we're gonna use stepped bars. And we're gonna make these very tiny. So we're gonna go with three for our bar width. I like that, that looks pretty interesting. And what we're gonna do is we wanna try to find a way to fill it out all the way around. So let's actually go with our bars because we know we can fill it out all the way around if we go to our rounded cap right here. Or we can also remove our dead zone. Now I don't know if we can do that with just stepped bars. Let's see. Can we remove our dead zone? No, we can't. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go with our bars and we're going to remove the dead zone from there so i think we just do that by going like that there we go the smaller we make it the more it's like that you know what we want we probably want it to be a little bigger so that looks pretty cool i like how that looks we've rounded it out now what sort of colors do we want well we've got kind of a blue and yellow color going on there so let's make let's match that theme a little bit we're going to scroll down here and we're gonna go to our uh, 
let's see, we've got our ceiling and our floor. But we wanna go with more of a gradient color and we're going to select our yellow color. It's kind of muted and we're gonna select a uh, bluish color and that probably works, that's pretty close. And there we go. So now we can see that that's kind of pretty similar to the colors that we're getting here. Actually, we probably could go with the blue color, maybe go with more of an orange color there. So let's do that. Let's select more of an orangish color. There we go, I like that. So that's gonna mix in pretty well. Let's click OK. And there we have it right here. And that looks pretty interesting. We're gonna put this up here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna drop this behind our mask. So there we go. Now we see this poking out just from behind our mask. We're gonna go and right click, we're gonna go to properties and we're going to maybe make the bar width a little bigger. So we'll go with 10. There we go. That looks pretty cool. That's kind of interesting. We'll shrink it down a little bit more, move it properly behind us. So it just kind of pokes out that way. And you can add this to any circular mask feature that you use. I'm just using this one because it's already pretty interesting. And there we go. So now what I'm gonna probably do is I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this. And let's add this right to the center. Let's go to transform and we're gonna fit to screen. We're gonna uh, center to screen. There we go. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this cam wave and I'm gonna copy it. And then I'm gonna paste the duplicate just like we did before. Then I'm gonna go ahead and right click on this and I'm gonna go into transform we can rotate this if we want to. What I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna flip this horizontal as well. And there we go. So now we have kind of the sound coming through on both sides. We have to move this below everything. And there you go. So now it has like a more dynamic look to it. And in areas where we're not getting any bump, we're gonna be getting bump. And it keeps the bottom pretty, pretty copacetic. Now, one of the problems is we're obviously gonna be running off screen. So if I switch over here to our tutorial scene, you're gonna see that the way that it's set up, it cuts it off up here at the top. And we can fix that. That's not a big problem to fix. What we have to do is we'll go back into our nested scene. And the reason why we did this in a nested scene is going to be apparent in a moment. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hex mask and I'm going to shrink that down a little bit. And then I'm going to take my camera and we're going to shrink that down a little bit as well. And then I'm going to take my hex mask and my camera and we're going to move them back over here and what I can do is right click on this and we'll go to transform and we're going to go to center to screen and there we go and then we're going to take our cam wave mask one and two and select both of those and we're just going to shrink them up now I think no matter how loud we get we are going to be okay and you'll see if I flip over here to my actual tutorial screen now we have the wave mask going right around us it looks really pretty cool. Um, I don't like how it's all at the top and not at the bottom. So I think what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go back into our nested scene and I think we're gonna be able to fix this as well. I'm going to take that second wave mask and we're going to go into our transition, our transform, and we're going to flip this vertically. And there we go. So now we have one on the top, one on the bottom. It kind of is angular. Man, that looks that looks really pretty cool now. So I'm gonna flip back over into our tutorial scene and there we go. Now we've got a really cool wave mask on top of this. And the reason why I did it in a nested scene is because now you can see I can move it around anywhere we want and I don't have to worry about it becoming separate from any of the masks. And I can make it as big or as small as I want as well. So when I pull up my tutorials in here, it's gonna work the way I expect it. I can move it when I need to. So if I'm working on a tutorial on this screen and it happens to be something right over this camera area that I want to show, I can easily move the camera and it doesn't come apart into four or five different pieces. And we really got a pretty cool camera thing going on here now with this waveform. I really like it. I told you it was gonna be easy. This is a really great way to add animation to any scene without creating complicated overlays. But if you wanna see how to create your own custom overlays for your live stream, you should check this video out. 
Big thanks to the sponsors that support this channel. You can find their links in the description below. And I couldn't possibly do this without them or you. So thanks. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. And I'll see you in the next one.